Hi, this is Mark with the Pilot Information Center. How can I help you today? Yeah, Mark, I'd like to know more about the IKO uh, flight plans. At this point, I'm just right now looking at these and trying to figure out, mm -hmm. there, you know, there's different suffixes, there's different uh, yeah. places the, to put the, your, your equipment or your information in there. And You've been filing FAA flight plans for years, but one day, you find yourself having to file an IKO flight plan. What do you do? Relax. It's pretty simple, and not at all unlike what you've already been doing. So what is IKO anyway? It is the International Civil Aviation Organization, and it's actually part of the United Nations. The IKO sets the standards that make international travel relatively seamless. In recent years, the FAA has been adopting more IKO standards in an effort to bring the United States closer to the global standards of air travel, and the use of an IKO flight plan is no exception. Use of an ICAO flight plan is currently required whenever the flight will enter international airspace, the flight will enter RVSM, the flight expects services based on ADSB, or the flight includes routing based on performance-based navigation, or PBN. The differences between an ICAO flight plan and an FAA flight plan are pretty small, though it does require some close attention to make sure you've got the details correct. Some items are the same as they've always been. Aircraft ID or tail number, aircraft type, fuel endurance, and number of people on board. Other items will be new, such as a wake turbulence category and type of flight. The most interesting change, though, is found in the equipment suffixes box in box 10. The IKO codes used to denote the type of equipment on board the aircraft are different than the codes used by the FAA. Where the FAA established a single letter to determine entire avionics packages, the IKO system lets you pick and choose which equipment you have and the capabilities of your avionics. For example, if you have a standard avionics package including a standard VHF radio, a VOR, and an ILS receiver, you would start your equipment line with the letter S. If you also had an IFR-approved GPS on board, you would add the letter G. If you are able to accept PBN routes and procedures, you would add the letter R. Now, PBN is a new concept that encompasses both area navigation, RNAV, and required navigation performance, RNP. So if you're using RNAV or RNP for any phase of the flight, this code applies to you. So far, your equipment code will read SGR. To finish up box 10, you must list your transponder equipment code on the right-hand side of box 10, referred to as box 10B. If you have a mode C transponder, just enter the letter C. If you have a mode S transponder, there are seven different codes that may apply to you. Your best bet is to check with the user guide for your particular model to find out which code applies. There's one more information box related to the IKO flight plan. The other information box, box 18. Now, if you previously listed your flight as PBN capable in box 10 with the letter R, that only notified ATC that your equipment is PBN approved. Since PBN describes many different types of equipment, you must specify what you're equipped with in box 18. Most piston-powered GA aircraft will include the code PBN slash B2, C2, D2 in box 18. The B denotes RNF5 capability, C denotes RNF2 capability, and D denotes RNF1 capability. By listing this code, you are telling ATC that you are capable of handling RNF-based procedures for the en-route structure and terminal procedures. Hi, my name is Ty from the Pilot Information Center. If you have any questions similar to the one you just heard, give us a call. We'd love to hear from you.